Honorable Fellow of the Pharmaceutical Society of Kenya, Dr. Rod Roger Zatebe, my respected seniors present on this call today, my esteemed colleagues, the Dean of the School of Pharmacy at Kenyatta University and members of your faculty, our valued graduates, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, my name is Daniela Munene and I'm the CEO of the Pharmaceutical Society of Kenya and I'm very pleased to welcome you to this Othing Ceremony, virtual Othing Ceremony of the Bachelor of Pharmacy class of 2020. And at this moment, I would like uh, to ask the Dean, Dr. Gladys Mwangi, to nominate um, a student to make a prayer. Uh, thank you, uh, honorable members, uh, members of faculty and uh, our students. Uh, our students, are you there? Dr. Munene? Yes. Obadia, Obadia Tirop has her yes. hand up. All right. Obadia? Obadia, you can go ahead and make a prayer for us. Thank you. Okay, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you this time. We pray. We thank you for this moment. We thank you for the far we've come. We thank you for this opening ceremony. We pray that you be with us. We pray that you watch over us. We pray that you facilitate us to the end. And when we finish, we'll glorify your name, O oh Lord. We thank you and we pray that you'll be with us. For it is in Jesus' name we do pray and believe. Amen. Thank you very, very much uh, for that prayer, Obadia. We appreciate. May I have the next slide, please? So I'd like to um, give you the program for today. So I'll give a few opening remarks. Thereafter, we shall have introductory remarks from KU. Uh, and this session shall be led by Dr. Gladys Mwangi, who is a Dean of the School of Pharmacy. Third, we shall have remarks from a representative of the PSK National Executive Committee of our Governing Council. And that is former president, Dr. Paul Mwaniki, who will give some remarks for five minutes. Thereafter, we shall have remarks from a representative of PPB. And today we are joined by the head of practice and training at PPB, Dr. Wilfred Ochieng. Then we shall have remarks from the PSK president who shall also award the best student. And then this all will take about 30 minutes. Now thereafter, we shall have the definitive oath ceremony led by Honorable Fellow Dr. Rogers Atebe. And so uh, we can begin the program. Uh, my opening remarks are really that we've been doing this uh, physically and um, this time we've had to do it virtually because of, of course, because of the pandemic. But interestingly, doing it virtually brings with it some unique advantages. For example, availability uh, is increased of all the people that you would want to be part of the ceremony. Uh, and so it has been easier to convene a, a, a great team to, to carry out this um, ceremony simply because it's a lot more convenient. That still, I still thank, that said, I still, I'm still very thankful for all of you um, for making time to be here with us. Um, otherwise, let's just get into the program. Uh, I hand over to you, uh, Dr. Gladys Mwangi, to give us remarks from KU. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Honorable fellow Dr. Roger Satebe, uh, Dr. Louis Mashogu, PSK president, Dr. Wilfred Ochieng, the director of pharmacy practice and training at the Pharmacy and Poisons Board, 
uh, Dr. Paul Mwaneki, uh, PSK National Executive Council representative and immediate former PSK president, uh, Dr. Daniela Munene, PSK CEO, the PSK Secretariat, and then uh, members of the School of Pharmacy, starting with chairpersons of departments, members of faculty present, our BFAM class of 2020, good afternoon. I bring you greetings from the School of Pharmacy here at Kenyatta University and uh, to welcome you uh, to the professional oath ceremony for the BFAM class of 2020. Uh, Kenyatta University Management is aware that we are conducting this ceremony. I bring you greetings from the Deputy Vice Chancellor Academic, uh, Professor Paul Okemo, who would have liked to be with us, uh, but had to take an assignment from the Vice Chancellor. He sends his apologies and wishes us a successful uh, ceremony. And members, you will remember that in the last oath in ceremony, we were joined by our former DVC, Professor John Okumu. Before I proceed, members, I wish to allow at least one chairperson of department to say something small, uh, and then I can continue. And I wish to nominate uh, Dr. Samuel Shege with your permission, uh, uh, Secretariat. Sure thing, thank you. Dr. Shege? Yeah, thank you, Dean. Uh, Honorable Fellow Dr. Roger Tembe, Dr. Machogu, PSK President, Dr. Moniki Nek, Representative, Dr. Wilfred uh, Ocheng, the Head of Pharmacy Practice at the Pharmacy and Poison Board, fellow faculty members, you know, and our dear graduates, good, good afternoon. I'm pleased to, to, to join this meeting. And this is a very important occasion for our students because I remember when they came in, in 2014, we were so happy to have them. And that time we referred them as pharmacy students. And for today, it's an important occasion because you are going to transition them and give them a north so that they can become pharmacy professionals. So to our fellow graduates, there are two things perhaps I should like to tell you. And the first thing I would like to tell you, today you are transitioning, you are no longer students, but you are pharmacists. At least, at least after you take the oath, you're going to become pharmacists. And as you, as you start this journey, remember what we told you in, in 2014, we told you we are going to train you to become pharmacist. And I'm very sure you, during that time, for a period of five years, we've given you a lot of information, perhaps both in, in terms of pharmacology, in terms of pharmaceutics, but perhaps allow me today to tell you two, two different things about life after the after today you require a different kind of intelligence as you, as as you face life from today there is there is there is what there is what i would um, refer to as spiritual intelligence the awareness you need to be aware 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 about yourself you also need to have the creative intelligence Creative intelligence need you. You need to start thinking out of the out of the box. For you to succeed in life and uh, to succeed in life, perhaps the most important lesson you can learn is from um um a somebody. Let me refer him to a somebody. And this gentleman or this somebody. It's 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 King Solomon, and you uh, for those for those of you who are Christian, you must have read his story from the book of Proverbs. And let me give you two quotations from what he said. And this is what he said: He who increases his wealth by exorbitant interest amasses it for another will be kind to the poor. 
the importance of this statement as you practice, as you start practicing, as you start dispensing, as you start handling drug products, some of you, of course, I, I, I know sometimes you'll be, be tempted to, to hike prices or maybe to, to overcharge. Please remember, as you practice, you need, you, 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 you need to be very, very cautious of, on, on how you practice. The second point, uh, the, the second quotation from, from this King Solomon, it's something to do with wisdom. As you practice, you need to be wise. You need to, to apply your intelligence. This is what he said. He who, he who is devoid of wisdom, despite his neighbor, but a man of understanding hold his peace. So there is usually a thing that usually say that education is what remains after one's leave college. This means you may you may be have you may you may have a lot of knowledge you may have a lot of a lot of information but what remains is what remains is what um it's 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 um it's what you are going to practice and what what, what people are going to see as 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 you as start to to practice in our department we are in the process of developing several 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 courses postgraduate courses we have a master's in pharmacology in the pipeline. We also we always, we are, we are, we, are, we also have um, a plan to develop a a, name, a master's pharmacy in clinical pharmacy. So perhaps after you do an internship, I would invite you to come back for for more training. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Shege, uh, for those comments uh, that will be enriching to our uh, in the interest of time, allow the introduction organized by the Pharmaceutical Society of Kenya and the School of Pharmacy at Kenyatta University uh, 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 is very, very to PSK for this facilitation in room societies for all the schools, all the seven schools uh, in the country. Uh, this uh, uh, appreciation is not just from members of faculty, it is also from our young uh, budding upcoming pharmacists, whether they are students or whether they are about to graduate or whether they are those who have graduated. So thank you very much, PSK, uh, for everything. You've never let us down and we are truly happy to have this strong bond uh, with PSK. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, today the School of Pharmacy at Kenyatta University presents 49 uh, BFAM graduates who have satisfied the School of Pharmacy uh, Board of Examiners and Kenyatta University Senate uh, for the award of the degree of Bachelor of Pharmacy, which as we all know is no mean feat uh, for anyone who undertakes uh, the Bachelor of Pharmacy program. Now, this group is our sixth cohort and has also completed the pre-internship pharmacy and poisons board examinations. Uh, and they just received their results uh, last week we have informal uh, knowledge that they did very well in that examination with an impressive 98% uh, pass rate. Uh, so for this, and this is the highest really that the school has seen since inception in 2008, we are really, really very proud of this uh, class of 2020. And on behalf of all the staff in the school, both academic and uh, technical, I wish to really, really congratulate and thank you for not letting us down. Um, this morning at around 11 o'clock, I received a phone call from the head, transcripts, graduation and certificates. Our students and faculty members will know the head as Dr. Kirui. And uh, about a week ago, we had shared a list of our top 10 students, hoping that at least our highest ranking student in terms of GPA would... We are losing you a bit. The rest of graduate. 
University. To my surprise, in 2012, can you hear me? Yes, now we can. Hello? Yes, if you could just uh, go back to the point of the phone call, we lost I'm you. Sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm so sorry. I wasn't aware. So sorry about that. So I was saying that uh, today's mission and certification we have supplied a list of our top 10 students from this class so that you could rank them to be. I think we have lost the dean. Yeah, we yeah we can't hear what the dean is saying. Yeah, I think it's internet issues at our side. Yeah, we seem to have completely lost her. Um, let's give her a few seconds. If not. Um, Hello. Now you're back. Okay. I'm so sorry. I seem to have unstable internet. Yeah, but now it's yeah. clear. Okay, let, let me finish quickly and say that uh, our top in the university, we have a list of 10 students, top overall students uh, who are graduating. And out of these 10, eight of our students are in that list. And the top five positions are being held by students in this class of BFAM 2020. So we are very, very proud about this class and uh, we are celebrating with them. In conclusion, I want to remind our students that this may be the last official meeting that we will have with them as KU students. Uh, but remember that they are alumni of Kenyatta University and the school and that we will always be together, even when they are outside there. We wish them well. To our students, go and make the world better. You can do it. And be proud to have come from Kenyatta University, a school of pharmacy. May God light your paths and use you for the good of humanity. Thank you very much. Asante Sana, Dr. Mwangi. Uh, the young ones are happy to receive a blessing from you. Uh, I'm sure Honorable Fellow Dr. Rogers Atebe will agree with me that, uh, you know, blessings that come from your seniors uh, tend to stick. So they are very lucky and, and a very good performance uh, by the students. Without further ado, we'll, I will welcome um, our next speaker, who is uh, the former president of the Pharmaceutical Society of Kenya. And he's also an ex-official member of the PSK NEC. Karibu sana, Dr. Mwaniki, over to you. Okay, thank you. I'll take only five minutes, first of all, uh, <clears throat> through the dean and the other extinguished any the other lecturers of the Kenyatta University, I can see Kodiambo there. Kodiambo is an old friend of mine. You remember those days we were selling samosa somewhere? Yes, in campus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, so and uh, also through the president of Amsco Society of Kenya, Dr. Louis Mashogu, and uh, the board member of uh, fellow of PPB, fellow Roger Satebe. To me, I just want to highlight a few things. I'll be very candid to the students and uh, tell them the truth. Uh, first of all, I'll comment from a, from a practice perspective. Eh? Uh, what we have seen, I've been personally, I'm one of the farmers who has been in the retail practice for the last, actually, uh, on running a retail business for the last 10 years. So I've received interns from almost all universities. There's no university can say, I think, only maybe Kabarak, I don't think I've seen there. I don't think they've graduated the first class, but the others have received them. I want to make the following uh, feedback complaints. Actually, I'll call them complaints. And this is to the students, not to the faculty. Since you've been told now from today you are a pharmacist, just know I want to highlight a few things. One, that we are, as, as the people who are going to receive it for interns, and it's good also, Dr. Cheng is. Uh, in this group uh, as a head of training sends as intern. Sometimes we get university sending as uh, students on fourth term. 
to our facilities. Eh? And one thing we have noticed that the dress code, especially for the boy child is, it's, it's not good, it's very poor. Let me put it like that. So you might have today gotten very good grades, eh? but now when you get outside here, we, are, we want more than grades. When you come inside, uh, you are sent to an internship place, eh? just know first thing you are going to work. You're not coming here as a student. And uh, what we've seen is that uh, I've not gotten much, uh, I don't have much issues with the ladies, the girls or the, or the women, but the men or the boys, a serious problem. Eh? Uh, one, the dress code, you need to know that when you're coming to a retail, especially the retail pharmacy and the hospital one, eh? you need to be officially dressed as a pharmacy. There is what the patients expect when they come and find you at the counter or in the pharmacy. They expect to see someone dressed. Uh, if you can see my profile picture, that one was done like maybe five years ago. Uh, that is, uh, I'm officially dressed. In fact, and also look at the air cut and everything else. So if you want some beards, uh, trim them to that level. If you want some hair, you see that size of there. Uh, you may not have a, we are not saying you come with a suit, eh? but at least invest in a good tie. Or just a few several tie. Ties are not expensive. You need a, you have to be with official shoes, either which are either black or brown. Just know that. Eh? Uh, don't come to, also the trousers must be soft trousers, which now we have a shirt which you have tucked in with a tie. And your hair must be, cannot be a fro. We have received students, especially uh, any, the boys, obvious, eh, come here with a fro, I hear like this, and you expect me to allow you to work in my pharmacy. What will the patients think eh, when they come and find such a person now that's a pharmacy? They just think this institution is not serious, if that's a face of pharmacist here. Yeah. As a owners of business, we, are, we have a brand to protect. So when we tell you, we, according to your grooming, you don't fit and you can't be working within our brand or our institution, we are very serious about that because that's how we make money. But leave us, so we don't want to come and someone to be sent for internship or even later when you're finished, you're coming to work. Eh? And the first day you're coming to ask me for a job, you're coming in jeans and it's on a Monday or Tuesday. You're coming in jeans, in sneakers, a t-shirt or something like that. And you expect me to give you a job? No. You're not serious from the first impression. So the first impression is very important. Just know when you step out there, you're going to look for a job. If it was not emphasized in the university, it has to be, you have to be officially dressed if anyone is to take you serious. Your hair must be, I, I don't want to repeat, but I have issues with the boys about the hair. Someone coming here with a afro, others with very long beard like this. You will think is even uh, who, who this is. And several times, even within the last one or two months, I've had to send, uh, someone sent to my place for intangible fourth term, tell them just go back home or go look for the kinyos outside the gate, eh? get your hair cut and your beard done for you to come back here. I don't expect that one since I've given this feedback from that aspect. The dress code is so important. And what I to because now personally, the one time I called the president of PSK, I told him you need to convince the, all the deans of universities and emphasize this because it's becoming too much for us who are receiving the student to start teaching adults dress code. Uh, uh, maybe that one has not yet been done, but uh, personally, I've decided, and I think I'll talk to all the other retail pharmacies and hospitals that any student or intern comes to us with improper dress, we'll just send them back to the sender. If it's PPB, we'll send them for interview, we'll just send you back to PPB to go look for another premises. So if all of you, we agree like that, eh, then you'll not have an internship place because it's becoming too much. If you are sending students, they have come for fourth term and they from just evaluation, I don't like the way you, you are grooming. I just send you back to the university, go look for another place. And, uh, I know that one is a little bit harsh, but that's the reality. It's good to tell young people the reality instead of sugarcoating it. Eh? And I wanted to stop at that. Okay, uh, Dr. Moniki, that is loud and clear. Thank you very much. Uh, I'd like to recognize the presence of the Director of Pharmacy Practice and Training 
at the Pharmacy and Poisons Board, Dr. Wilfredo Chiang, and I'd like to welcome you to make your remarks. Uh, thank you, Daniela. I hope you can hear me. Yes, I can hear you loud yeah, and clear. Te technology allows us to attend meetings even when you're not in the office. I'm currently not in the office. So I hope if you can hear me, I'll proceed and speak. To the Honorable Fellow, who is the Chief Guest, uh, Dr. Roger Satebe, the PSK President, the Dean, Faculty of uh, uh, the Dean of the School of, uh, of Pharmacy at KU, the faculty members present, the graduates, and of course, all protocols observed. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Yeah, I want to take this opportunity to thank you for inviting me to attend this very important function uh, and uh, extend my congratulations to both the faculty and of course the graduates, first of all, for having made it to now be, be, become pharmacists. I use your sis to be pharmacy students. So congratulations on that achievement. Uh, I want to say uh, that uh, it's an achievement, but it's also a beginning for you after this oath now, and uh, now that you've already done the PPB exams, as you get posted, you are now fully pharmacist. Of course, what remains is that you cannot practice until you have been registered as a pharmacist. So uh, I want to encourage you that uh, as uh, I think it is attributed to Elena Roosevelt, who said that the future belongs to those who believe in the beauty of their dreams. So if you believe in your dreams, I think you can achieve. And uh, first and foremost, you need to believe in this dream of uh, the future of pharmacy practice. Uh, we expect uh, a, a very innovative uh, group uh, going for the, I think you, you guys could be what we call millennials. Huh? So we expect a very innovative uh, group of uh, or cohort of pharmacists who are going to drive practice and uh, of course, uh, bring a lot of contribution in areas of uh, innovation and other ways of practicing pharmacy. So uh, I think as you join the profession, there's a lot of expectation that uh, the society expects from you. Uh, you are uh, work as a pharmacist basically is, uh, you know, for people, I talked about the beauty of your dreams. People have different dreams. Uh, if I asked you, what are your dreams? Some people will say they want to, they dream of making a lot of money. Others dream of being uh, of exemplary service to humanity in the field of uh, pharmacy practice or wherever you will end up because the truth of the matter is in the real world out here, you are going to practice as a pharmacist and that is why we are here. But at the same time, we also encourage pharmacists to venture into other areas where you can also be, the pool will be groundbreaking uh, in those areas. And we'll be very proud of pharmacists who are extending their technicals. But the most fundamental one is how you're going to practice pharmacy. Uh, I want to say that uh, pharmacists are very trusted professionals and most of the time you will be the first point of contact especially those who will be in community pharmacy, the first point of contact for patients seeking uh, health or healthcare for that matter. So uh, you have to maintain that. And when I allude to what uh, Dr. Moniki has talked about, he was talking about uh, the image. I think he spent a lot of time talking about the image of pharmacists, that you have to be there to represent. In Swahili, was wakilishe. So that image is very important. And also there is a very important part of it called ethics. If your dream is to become a millionaire or a billionaire, or your dream is something else, at the end of the day, uh, when you're achieving your dreams, you have to maintain professional ethics. And I think that is the main reason why we are here today. Uh, when the oath will be administered to you, it will be to uphold standards of uh, practice and ethics while you're doing that. 
Uh, I'll give you a very short uh, story. Yeah, a story is told of uh, a person who was uh, engaged in pharmaceutical manufacturing, but was producing substandard products and releasing them into the market. So it is said that one day this guy fell ill and uh, was not in a position where he could actually speak. So he could only use gestures. So while in that indisposed position, uh, medicine is brought to be administered to him. And lying there, he cannot speak. And he's seeing his own medicine that he made being uh, brought to be administered to him. And he's trying to stop these people trying to guess and they can't understand what is happening. Uh, that is, uh, I don't want to complete the story, but you get the moral of the story that whatever you do, you do it as if you are to do it unto yourself. And I think that goes back to the principles of uh, Confucius. Do unto others what you'd like to be done unto you. And that is a very basic principle that is uh, applicable in ethics. So uh, to the young graduates, I want to urge you that uh, remember why you are here today, to take the oath and that ethics is at the core of all that. Now, uh, I want to speak briefly about PPB. PPB is uh, the regulator and it has a dual mandate. The mandate is to regulate uh, health products and technologies. The other mandate is to uh, regulate the pharmacy profession, just like the other now professional regulatory bodies like the medical council, the nursing council and all that. So PPB has a dual mandate. And we are lucky as it is now, pharmacists are at the core of regulating both the products and of course their profession. Uh, as you uh, go out, uh, I want to congratulate you again. Uh, you are 49 of you. We administered for the first time online examinations. And uh, as uh, the Dean said, uh, we are very happy that you got probably the highest pass rate that you ever had. That was 98%. Uh, that is uh, one out of 49 did not make it. So 48 of you made it, and we want to congratulate you for that. Uh, students have been asking when PPB is going to waive the examination for KU. And I think uh, that is a matter which we are going to follow up as had been promised to the school that we'll review and uh, come up with a way forward so that you don't have to sit the level one exam. So we are going to restructure and feedback will be given to the School of Pharmacy. Uh, another thing I want to say is as you go for internship, as uh, probably Dr. Moniki also alluded to, internship is a training uh, position. You have to use that internship to acquire the right uh, experiences and skills that will propel you in your profession. The another important thing is the attitude because you know uh, when you have the wrong attitude then you cannot grow. So you must have the right attitude even as you're posted for internship. Make sure that you go and do the work, learn, get the experience and skills so that you can stand on your own and uh, give the best service to humanity when you are out there. So take that opportunity and learn so that you can stand on your own. And uh, another thing is that there are guidelines, some of those things which have been alluded to by Dr. Moniki regarding uh, the image and all that. The guidelines for internships also include some of those things and uh, take time to go through them as you try to walk into the profession and grow so that I believe some of you will become the future leaders of the profession. So uh, once again, I take this opportunity to congratulate you on this achievement and wish you the best of luck as you join the pharmacy profession. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Ochieng. It's always good to have Serikali with us in our events. I can see you've promised KU some good things, uh, but we really appreciate you taking the time. And now we move on to remarks from the PSK president, Dr. Louis Machogo. Thank you, Dr. Daniela, PSK CEO. Uh, the Honorable Fellow, Dr. Rogers Atebe, uh, Madam Dean, um, uh, faculty members, chairs uh, fac and faculty members, uh, my, my respected seniors who may be here today and my esteemed colleagues. Um, 
good afternoon. So it, to me, it's indeed a great pleasure to be here with you um, during this session, uh, just to, to share with you this uh, occasion of voting. Um, it's very hard. Uh, in the past, we've seen that uh, it's very hard for our members to be out there um, interacting with their core mandate, which is uh, patient-centered. It doesn't matter which uh, Daniel is someone speaking. Uh, needs to be muted. It doesn't matter which, uh, which sector you find yourself in. The patient is at the core. However, we have found uh, um, members have been in struggling greatly. And this we've uh, traced it back to the, the fact that there's um, lack of uh, a strong or thing sort of ceremony. And uh, yeah, this class is indeed blessed uh, to be having this uh, session happening. And uh, I, I think some of you have seen it's happening for one hour and a half and maybe surprised uh, about that. But by the end, you'll be able to see why. Because um, when you go out there, when you're dealing with people's lives, you cannot carry the burden by yourself. Yeah, you need, uh, I think uh, Dr. Samuel mentioned about uh, spiritual acumen, yeah, uh, balance in your own life. So that are some of the things that we, we would like to implore on you, uh, even as you go out there. And just remembering, I think the Honorable Fellow will also take us through a journey of how the oath ceremony came to effect in the 1980s um, by PSK. So as you graduate, and congratulations for that, you are coming in uh, almost as members of the pharmaceutical society, as the property of the pharmaceutical society, for us as a family then to perpetuate the standards of the practice. So allow me to share my slides. Um, I have some slides here uh, and I'll just take you. So just to introduce uh, what PSK is, uh, and just to, uh, uh, Dr. Moniki mentioned about suits and all that, uh, targeting the boy child. Um, uh, yes, it's not really a targeting, but really honest feedback. Uh, even I personally bought my first suit when I graduated. Um, but really, you're not being asked to look for a suit. You are being asked to present yourself in a manner that that patient coming in will take you seriously. Uh, I know you are generation X, Z, you are born in the age of digital, and you've seen the digital CEOs all wearing T-shirts and, and uh, flip-flops. Uh, however, if you present yourself like that to the patients, um, they will not take you seriously, and they'll not take your profession seriously. Uh, I would like for you to just borrow a leaf even from the lawyers. Yeah, uh, no, Even your grandmother somewhere, the oldest person you know, when they want to sell land, they can't do it without a lawyer. Yeah. And it's just the manner in which lawyers carry themselves out. So even you do not allow yourself or your neighbor, who's a professional pharmacist, to dilute the image of the profession. Yeah. Uh, buy for them so that they can be able to carry the profession's image. Um, in a manner that befits the great work you've been put out there to do. Um, as you all know, PSK is the umbrella body of pharmacists. That's why we are here administering this oath. Dr. Atebe, uh, Honorable Fellow Dr. Atebe will talk a bit more about that. Uh, we have an organogram that's governed, so the society is governed by a national governing council um, that draws its membership from uh, uh, elected branch officials. It has a national executive committee under which the CEO is a secretary. We have a secretariat that coordinates programs, communications, finance, and administration, and standing committees. Uh, and also, we have the other committees there. Um, our members are drawn from different sectors. Um, we have in the public sector, um, and this the public sector, you find them, some of them are CECs, some of them are, you know, um, the administrative uh, end of it, and some are practicing uh, patient centered care. Some of them are CEOs of uh, public uh, hospitals. We have academia, as some of your lecturers are here today. We have trade, commerce, and enterprise. Um, uh, uh, 30, 35 of the 38 pharmaceutical manufacturers in this part of the world come from Kenya, and they do a lot of uh, trade uh, in pharmaceuticals, uh, importation and distribution uh, as well, uh, uh, including retailers. So there's that sector. 
um, epidemiology, looking at disease patterns and what have you, um, pharmacoepidemiology as well, uh, post-market surveillance, hospital and specialization, leadership and administration. Some of you, as you go out there, please plug in, even if it's the local church, the local mosque, the local uh, um, uh, community group, because that's how you become uh, aware of the local issues. Um, you can become an MCA, an MP, a senator, just by just being plugged into what is happening in the community. Um, so that's some of the areas we are um, in. Manufacturing, um, community, I've talked about clinical research. This is actually a, an area that many of you are not in. Uh, so those of you who have the acumen for clinical research, looking at clinical trials and even managing clinical trials, project management. Uh, we have nutraceuticals, regulatory, um, quality assurance, medical waste management, herbal medicines, health and wellness, um, systems and processes. Uh, a pharmaceutical business is, around, is about systems and processes. So look at yourself and see, do you fit in, in this and how do you uh, plug into that? Supply chain, agrovet, uh, statistics and analytics, because there's a, a, a need for utilization of the data that um, um, coming from, um, you know, just the spaces we are in practicing in, pharmacoeconomics, post market surveillance, e-health, you are the generation that is generation Z. So e-health is a big thing. Drug discovery, um, sports medicine, um, and uh, policy and regulation. So these are the spaces that you can go in and practice. In. So do not limit yourself or allow yourself to be limited. Um, our branches, we are strewn across the country. Um, we have some branches like South Rift has, um, has Nakuru and uh, Naivasha. Uh, others like um, uh, North Rift has Eldoret, uh, Kericho. Um, and so you, wherever you're posted, please reach out to PSK and you'll be able to be linked to your branch so that you can have your uh, routine meetings. Uh, that's a PSK WhatsApp number, 0703-270-831. Kindly save that number so that you can even be placed into a PSK WhatsApp group. Um, so that you can be able to get a lot of intel um, and what have you. And if you haven't uh, subscribed to the PSK social media handles, please do so. We have the Code of Ethics. Um, this is an important document. Um, if I can just show you, uh, again, you can be, this can be sent to you by the PSK WhatsApp number once you've um, contacted it. Uh, it, it. It shares with you even we have the competency framework for uh, if you are a community pharmacist. Dr. Mwaniki has mentioned about uh, getting members coming in and uh, you know looking for jobs. So it's one thing you can actually review this document and see what can you take to Dr. Mwaniki and be able to uh, sort of add value to his practice uh, on the ground or any other. So we have um, uh, in community pharmacy, uh, pharmaceut uh, pharmaceutical manufacturing and uh, any hospital patient centered care. Um, we have the, like I said, competency framework. So this document is available to you. We have the auth in there, um, code of practice, any dispute in the profession and how to uh, resolve those, it's all captured into, in this document. So this is an important document for you to have. So kindly reach out to the PSK um, um, Secretariat using the WhatsApp number I have shared um, up there, 0703-270-831. Um, we are publications, so any of you who would like to, when you are out there and you would like to pub, pu, uh, publish the work you're doing, please kindly just uh, subscribe to that and uh, send us your manuscripts. Um, we have activities throughout the year, branch meetings, um, our pharmacy awareness week, um, the annual scientific conference, again, you can plug into that. We are affiliated to these bodies, PS, PPB, of course, where we draw our mandate for self-regulation uh, using the code of ethics and uh, other uh, bodies that whereby we are able to lobby and um, get you, uh, um, you know, into a better position in your practice space. Those are the membership categories. I won't go too much into that, but at this point, at this point, you can enter as an associate member. Online, you can actually subscribe as an uh, uh, under uh, psk.or.ke. 
Um, so I just wanted to share this story of this young man. This is Dr. Uh, Naibe. Um, he's, he's, he's from our PSK, um, that's the South uh, Central Rift branch, whereby uh, we have Kericho, Bomet, and, um, and uh, what's the other branch? I'm forgetting it. So Dr. Naibe graduated in 2015. And um, his, his journey is quite, uh, why I would like to share this story is some of you might live here and want to be, you know, uh, I had someone talk about millionaires immediately. I don't know what that will take, but it might mean that you'll be cutting uh, corners. So some of you might want to take the journey that is try to understand, um, uh, you know, as Dr. Samuel had shared earlier, what is this path you're coming into? What competencies? When you're coming here into the real world, there are competencies you'll be required to, to grasp and, uh, and grow in. So we have uh, Dr. Naibe, he um, graduated in 2015. Um, he did some, uh, he did of course his internship, did some locums in the uh, Rift Valley Training Institute, uh, offering uh, training to the uh, school that they have there. Um, he applied for a scholarship in 2018. Uh, they were shortlisted, um, 30 applicants, but unfortunately the Kenyan positions were taken up by uh, Tanzania and Rwanda. So again, you'll, you'll, you'll uh, re receive uh, disappointments out there, uh, but he kept on. Uh, so he applied in Kericho County for a job. Uh, before that he had applied in Bungoma County where he, where he had done his internship. He, did, he wasn't selected, there was no job there. 2018 March, he applied to in Kericho County. Um, the interviews were done in July. And during the interview panel, and this is actually why I like this young man, uh, during the interview panel, when he was asked if he has any questions for the panel, he, he remembered what he had been learning from uh, the PSK, um, uh, what do you call these webinars? And he asked the interview panel about um, their MTM clinic. They were actually shocked. What is an MTM clinic? So they wanted to know more. And you can actually see uh, Dr. Tari here doesn't come from that county. Um, the panel was able to understand what MTM is. Uh, he was able to demonstrate to them. And he was given the task of developing an MTM practice in the county and roll it out across the county. So long story short, today is 20, uh, 2020, 2019. He, was, he became a sub-county pharmacist in Bureti. He has an MTM practice. Um, he has, uh, and you can see his, his uh, promotion came from him just understanding that after he graduated, he knew nothing. Yes, you know the technical part of it, but when you're coming out here, there's uh, like you've had dress code, there's politics around there. There is just the whole element that you can't do things by yourself. So you need to grow from your dependent state. So you know that you don't know anything. You uh, be proactive now to learn as Dr. Cheng has said, learn a bit more of what you need to learn uh, in the, if you're sent to manufacturing, what happens there? Don't say that I am, I am not interested in manufacturing. Learn something out there. Uh, be proactive in that. Also be proactive in the company you keep. We've had several members, um, uh, we've lost several members to alcoholism. Uh, or just because you get your money uh, from the government, uh, it's a big amount of money. Then you start, you know, becoming the cock of the, of the, what can I say, of the rural village you've been sent to, yeah? You start uh, spending your time at the pub just because you, uh, you have a little money. So be proactive in the company you keep. Um, look for more uh, opportunities to grow yourself in whatever you are. Begin with them. Have a plan. Implement the plan. Um, of course, your plan cannot be implemented by yourself. You need to grow into interdependence, thinking win-win. Uh, seeking first seeking first to understand others before to be understood uh, we have a lot of conflicts uh, out there in the profession even among professionals and uh, it's important to grow in these areas because these conflicts do not take us anywhere it actually stagnates our profession uh, seek to synergize then the next one is a uh, continual uh, improvement sharpening the soul growth service mentoring and growing each other so these seven habits, these are drawn from the seven habits of highly effective people. I know most of you have read this book by Steve Covey, but please spend more time, read it again under the context of you um, now living out here, out here in, in the real world. 
So with that, uh, I bless you and uh, encourage you to just reach out to us, belong to a branch, because that's how you'll be able to grow as a community. So, uh, and with that, I, I, I would like to return it back to Dr. Daniela to invite the, oh yes, I think I have, a, I needed to, I actually I return it to Dr. Daniela to award the top student and then invite Dr. Rogers Ated. Dr. Thank Daniela, you very much, yeah. Doctor. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm waiting for the other slide deck. And so um, it is my pleasure to announce the top student from Kenyatta University School of Pharmacy and the recipient of the Best Student Award from PSK, Mr. Stephen Mungai Kemani. I wish we could clap for you, um, but hearty congratulations. You are the proud recipient of the PSK Prize for the Best Student Award. Internally, we shall make sure that you get this award money, ha but sincere congratulations. Well done, we are proud of you. Um, at this juncture, I'd like to now invite Honorable Fellow Dr. Rogers Atebe to start the oathing ceremony. Over to you, Dr. Atebe. Well, thank you very much. We can't hear. There is one reason why you can't hear. Hmm. <laughs> now we can hear you. Hear now? Yes. Yeah? Yes. Okay. Now we can hear you. Um, once again, we I want to thank you, um, esteemed colleague, Dr. Daniela Munene. Uh, together with your team at the Secretariat uh, for the coordinating role that you have played in terms of uh, uh, this afternoon's uh, particular uh, function and a very important coordinating role uh, which has enabled us to reach this far. I want to appreciate the Acting Dean, School of Pharmacy, Kenyatta University, Dr. Gladys Mwangi, I would also like to acknowledge the presence of the chairman of departments, both uh, present and past within the school uh, and uh, the university. Represented, I do want to understand, by Dr. Samuel Sege and uh, my esteemed mentee, Dr. Titus Muhukahiga, who was in this particular meeting. Of course, I salute all the other professors, academic and non-academic staff who have joined this particular, um, uh, you know, conversation this afternoon. I also want to appreciate the presence of uh, the Director of Pharmacy Practice and Training, PPP, Dr. Wilfred Ochien, uh, who is representing the Pharmacy and Poisons Board CEO, uh, Dr. Fred Sioy. Uh, Mr. President of the Pharmaceutical Society of Kenya, Dr. Louis Machogu, and honorable fellows of the PSK who have um, uh, attended or graced this particular occasion. Um, immediate former PSK president, Dr. Paul Mwaniki, representing the National Executive Council, making very important remarks in this particular respect. Value the pharmacy graduates, honored parents of the graduating uh, uh, class. I believe there should be some who are uh, joined in this meeting, respected seniors, esteemed colleagues. There are some invited guests, other colleagues, all protocols observed, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this afternoon, we are gathered to celebrate the sixth cohort of the graduating Bachelor of Pharmacy class 
uh, who have met the requirements for the award of the degree or Bachelor of Pharmacy of Kenyatta University. First of all, let me congratulate our valued pharmacy graduates for the great achievement, and more so for your exemplary academic achievement, as we have been informed by the Dean, Dr. Glass de Mwangi, that actually you did exceedingly well within the university in general. I also want to take the early opportunity to wish each and every one of you great success in your career ahead. You have undergone training from basic foundational sciences through the clinical sciences and also the social and administrative and legal aspects of pharmacy practice. Those who have trained you are in many ways equated to your parents as they have mentored you along the way to this ultimate success that you celebrate through the oath that you are taking on this particular occasion. I want to caution you that more mentorship awaits you as you start your professional journey. We are all waiting for you. Now, mentorship, of course, starts with the acknowledgement that you are a child and those who are senior to you are your parents. And this is the basis of mentorship. The parent has an obligation to train a child as is written in the Holy Book for Christians. Train up a child in the way that he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. That you would find in Proverbs chapter 22, verse 6. And similarly, the child has an obligation to honor his or her parents. The Bible says, honor thy father and thy mother that the days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God will give you. This you will find in Exodus 20 verse 12. And I want to caution you, this is not simply referring to your biological parents, thy father and thy mother in the profession. If you honored your respected seniors, you honored your honorable fellows, you honored your esteemed colleagues, then you will enjoy the profession of pharmacy. Mentorship starts with the entry of the teacher practitioner at the level of application, the third level of Bloom's taxonomy and higher. Application is the use of established protocols, protocols, is developed by your senior colleagues. If something, however, breaks down, you must be analytical to fix it. The person who will come and authoritatively guide you on what to do is your senior colleague who has a wealth of experience. May I remind us, ladies and gentlemen, that professions are born out of need, the need to solve a problem. To become a professional, there is a need for prolonged training, which you have undergone, followed by learning of practical skills under senior colleagues in an internship program. It is your senior colleagues who have trained you at the university, and they will give you guidance. And I did warn you that it is your senior colleagues who are waiting for you in pharmacy practice areas to be able to guide you and to mentor you on exactly what you are supposed to be doing. Take that very seriously. Because if by the time you are going through internship, you have not managed to gain the sufficient skills for you and attitudes for you to be able to practice reasonably as a pharmacist, you are most likely going to appear before some disciplinary committee for contravention of the code of ethics. Now, having mentioned 
a code of ethics. Let me remind us that the code of ethics is founded more broadly on the Hippocratic oath. And the Hippocratic oath was written by Hippocrates when he graduated as a medical practitioner, a healthcare giver. He said, I swear by Apollo the healer, by Asclepius, by Hygieia, by Panacea, and by all gods and goddesses, making them my witnesses that I will carry out according to my ability and judgment, this oath and in danger. First of all, to hold my teacher in this art as equal to my parents, to make him a partner in my livelihood. When he is in need of money to share mine with him, to consider his family as my own brothers and to teach them this art if they want to learn it without fear or in danger, to impart precept and instruction and all other instruction to my own sons, the sons of my teacher, and to endangered pupils who have taken the physician's oath, but to nobody else. I will use treatment to help the sick according to my ability and judgment, but never with a view to injury and wrongdoing. Neither will I administer a poison to anybody when asked to do so, nor will I suggest such a cause. Similarly, I will not give a woman a pessary to cause abortion, but I will keep pure and holy both my life and my art. I will not use the knife, not even verily on the sufferers from stone, but I will give place to such as a craftsman therein. In whatsoever house I enter, I will enter to help the sick, and I will abstain from all intentional wrongdoing and harm, especially from abusing the bodies of man or woman, bond or free. And whatsoever I shall see or hear in the course of my profession, as well as outside my profession, in my intercourse with men, if it be what should not be published abroad, I will not divulge, holding such things to be holy secrets. Now, if I carry out this oath and break it not, may I gain forever reputation among all men for my life and for my art. But if I break it and forswear myself, may the opposite befall me. This is what Hippocrates said. In short, the Hippocratic oath prescribes that as a healthcare provider, I have to make five statements of undertaking. One, I will treat my teacher or my mentor as my parent. Number two, I will become a mentor and a teacher myself to my esteemed colleagues and my younger, colle younger uh, colleagues. Number three, I will practice holiness Four, I will uphold confidentiality. Five, my colleagues, I will treat as my brothers and sisters. Coming back to the pharmacy profession, therefore, we expect you as pharmacy graduates who are just graduating now to immediately adopt certain titles, you have already grabbed the one doctor, title doctor. I will just mention something about it shortly. Every professional colleague with a registration number before yours, you shall refer to them as a respected senior. Your peers shall be your esteemed colleagues. The handful of your senior colleagues who have received the peer recognition or fellow of the Pharmaceutical Society of Kenya, you will refer to them as honorable fellows before their other titles. Now, at this stage of your life, 
you ought to be sure of what the pharmacist's job description is. I want to remind you this. When we finish the outing ceremony, go aside, take a piece of paper and a pen, write down what you think you will be doing and keep that safely so that you can compare it with what the reality there will be in the practice arena. You will come to realize that it is your job description that indicates the impact that you will have on the lives of the patients that you will be serving. As you transition from student to pharmacy graduate, which you will do at graduation, and I want to caution you, after taking this oath, we'll give you the permission to use the title doctor, but you cannot use the title pharmacist until you have completed your internship and you have been registered as a pharmacist. The title pharmacist is restricted by the law, CAP 244, which is the Pharmacy and Poisons Act. You should therefore remember that everything that you do must have the patient at the center. So let me ask you a question. So what will be your guiding principle? What are your true north principles that will guide you in the practice of the professional pharmacy? Now, apart from the job description I've just alluded to, you will need a set of moral principles, principles of conduct governing you as an individual, and also as part of the body of pharmacists. In a profession, like the pharmacy profession, these principles are professional ethics, and they are usually summarized into what we call a code of ethics. Your respected senior colleagues have already highlighted some of the societal expectations awaiting you. Um, Dr. Samuel Chege has already uh, mentioned some of these. Uh, Dr. Paul Mwaniki has already mentioned uh, some of these. And the PSK president, uh, Dr. Louis Machogu, has already mentioned some of the expectations. So the expectations are very high. So let us come back now to the ethics in the pharmacy profession. In general, ethics in healthcare, as we know them today, generally have their roots in history from the time of Hippocrates, with the keystone being the Hippocratic Oath, which I've just taken you through. This oath served a number of purposes, including binding together healthcare professionals in a cohesive and effective social force with a clearly articulated focus on the principles of patient care, privacy, and to do no harm. In Kenya, the legal authorization for a pharmacist to practice is vested in the Pharmacy and Poisons Board. While it is expected, and this is the normal practice, that the professional body, the Pharmaceutical Society of Kenya, administers the code of ethics for pharmacists. This is why the oathing ceremony is domiciled within the Pharmaceutical Society of Kenya. The title doctor that you will earn today is also domiciled within the Pharmaceutical Society of Kenya and nowhere else. The code of ethics guides on how to behave how you will behave socially. We don't expect you to take substances which are going to cause levels of mental derangement, instability of mind, because we expect you to behave socially correctly as a pharmacist in a way that you will carry the brand pharmacist in high esteem wherever you are, socially, professionally, and how you relate to patients. Much has been talked about dress. 
I do not want to belabor that particular point. We don't expect hippies to be serving patients within pharmacies. We expect if you are a gentleman, you are wearing a proper shirt, you are wearing a tie, you are wearing a dust coat on top, and there is a name tag which shows who you are, your name, and the fact that you are either a pharmacy intern or pharmacist intern or a pharmacist yourself. And if you are a specialist, you have to indicate there on your name tag until people come to recognize you. I want to stop there, not to belabor that particular point. You have also to learn how to speak. It is not a matter of knowing English. How do you speak in such a way that whatever messages you are passing, whatever intonation you are passing around will be speak positively about the profession of pharmacy? There is a lot which is expected from you by the mere fact that you have, you have attained the qualifications and you are joining the profession of pharmacy. All new graduates or newly licensed pharmacists must make a pledge of commitment to professionalism and an allegiance to the professional code of ethics. And this is exactly why you are taking the oathing, the, the oath today in an oathing ceremony. Just a brief history. This particular pharmacist professional oath was started in 1989 by the then Dr. Francis Ndemo, who is now a professor. He actually wrote down the words to be used in the first edition of the first version of the oath. He brought this as chairman of the Pharmaceutical Society of Kenya, as we used to be referred to at that time, chairman. But then you now have president. The concept was brought to the University of Nairobi. It was the only school uh, which was training pharmacists locally at that time. The concept was heavily supported by the Department of Pharmacy. It was a department within the School of Medicine. And through the administrative structures, and we had most of uh, the, the fellows in academia, Dr. D.S. Ngugi, uh, uh, Professor uh, Isaac Kibuage, and the others, they are there. There are many, I can't name all of them, but I'm just highlighting one or two of them. They all supported this, and the whole thing became a reality during graduation ceremonies in Kenya in the 1990s. The oath, I want you to be clear, comes with it the Siamese twin, the honorary peer reference title doctor, adopted by pharmacists in 1989. That indeed is a long story, which I will not uh, proceed with this afternoon. My sons and my daughters, valued pharmacy graduates, ladies and gentlemen. By taking the professional oath, you are pledging allegiance to the code of ethics. The PSK admits you as a honorary member on payment of the prescribed fee until you are registered, qualifying you to become a full member of the PSK. You will sign a certificate of taking the professional oath, which I believe has been supplied to you by the Pharmaceutical Society of Kenya. Once you sign it, you will hand it over back to the secretariat and it will be signed by the president of the Pharmaceutical Society of Kenya and also signed by the CEO of the Pharmacy and Poisons Board who also happens to be the registrar of the Pharmacy and Poisons Board. And now by taking the oath that you are about to take, you are making a promise to serve a greater cause than your own personal comfort and well-being. You will not be looking for locums. 
The commitment you are making is the essence of professionalism. And proclaiming that commitment in public, aloud, even through the virtual platform, gives you a very firm foundation than if you were to do it in private. So you are deepening your sense of professional obligation. Ladies and gentlemen, all health professionals regularly face ethical and moral, moral challenges. And when you are faced by ethical and moral challenges, you will benefit from a reminder. And I want to recommend that when you have signed this certificate and this has been signed for you uh, by the president of the PSK and the CEO of the Pharmacy and Poisons Board, take a copy, frame it, and hang it behind you in your professional practice. And it will forever be a reminder that you committed yourself to professional code of ethics. It is now my very humble uh, pleasure to invite you to rise up and raise your right hand and repeat after me. As I mentioned, I, in the first instance, and mention the title doctor, I expect you to um, mention your name. I'll say I, doctor, then you mention your name. And after you have done that, you will then move to the next level to repeat after me each uh, statement that I make. I will give you a sufficient number of nanoseconds for us to be able to be in synchrony. I would like to request that you do not put on your microphones because of the enormous echo that is going to be there. And uh, just repeat after me, having given you sufficient time. At the end of that, I will ask you to append your signature to the certificate that was distributed to you or that you printed. And then when you have appended your signature, you will rise up again. And then I will make certain pronouncements before uh, we close with a word of prayer. I will now uh, take this opportunity to ask you to rise up. And I will use the original version, which is version 000 of the pharmacy Practitioners Professional Oath, uh, which was first published in 1989. I know that there are certain changes which have been made, but unless this oath is properly archived and coded, then we might lose the significance of the code of ethics and also the oath, the professional oath that we are taking. I want to request you now to kindly rise I will, if you allow me, I can put on my video from my phone so that we can work together in this. I hope it will be clear. Uh, would you allow me, if you drop those slides, you will allow me to have a proper reflection of what is uh, happening in terms of uh, Yes, I want to see that I'm actually standing. Can you pin my uh, video so that uh, the graduates can see exactly what we expect them to do? Please pin my video. We can video. see you. Would you I like to pin it so that it is at the center of the screen? About, do you, can you do that? It is at the center of so the screen. pharmacy graduates, I ask you to kindly rise. So let me see if it can be pinned. Oh, the host normally can do it. Doctor, but, uh, Doctor Ataba, do you would you want to see them as, as you do that as well? It will be better for us to see to see everyone. 
uh, that they have actually raised their hands. Okay, so give me one minute. I'm promoting everybody to a panelist. Uh, graduates, please, as soon as you you become a panelist, please put on your video so the, that the video you can only. be able to follow. The video only, not the audio. No, the audio. Audio will give us echo. Yes, please, uh, graduates, uh, put on your video and make sure your audio is off. I will announce when everybody um, has been promoted to a panelist, meaning that um, you're now able to manage your own controls of video and audio. So I'll wait until they have all uh, uh, become uh, panelists, then we'll start. How many minutes do we give you? One minute. <laughs> oh, just one, that's fine. Yeah. Put on your videos, please, uh, graduates. And if we can have I all of them- I hope you got the memo. I, I'm saying I hope they got the memo to dress formally. Dr. Mwangi. Well, we we will see whatever has been uh, discussed this afternoon, if it is actually a reality, because we expect they should not fear to put on the video. We'll forgive them for today only. <laughs> I had alerted <laughs> them to be dressed, dressed properly for this meeting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, graduates, today you are not being, uh, nobody is grading you <laughs> for once in your life. You'll not be graded no. today. <laughs> We will not hold anything against anyone. So let them just okay. put on their videos and then please uh, put them all on the screen. Okay, If for those of us who are watching, who, who are not taking the oath, even uh, for our honorable fellow, Dr. Tepe, if you move your own screen to the grid, if you go to the top right of your screen, you'll see different views that you can yes. enable. So there's one that's a grid many, many squares together. When you choose that one, that's when you're able to see everybody who's on the call. You see an icon for everybody who's on the call. Okay. Fine, are we ready now? Just give me, just give me a few more seconds because I'm doing it one by one. Okay. Let me also take the chance to try something here. Yeah. I hope it doesn't let us down. Just give me a few more moments. I think I have only six more to go. Okay, now everybody is able to put on their video. Uh, Honorable fellow Dr. Tepe, I'm done. Thank you very much. Let me see if I can uh, have this, yes. Okay, I believe that is uh, good enough. Then uh, we can uh, start uh, our oath. Um, now, as I did mention, I gave you the instruction what to do. I mentioned I, doctor, then you mentioned your name and then the rest you just follow after me until we finish uh, this particular um, oath. 
And then after that, you will have to get a one or two uh, seconds, maybe 30 seconds. You sign your name at the right place, and then you will have to stand up again, and then we can continue. So shall we start? I, Doctor. Hi. Doctor. Emmanuel Kikakuto. Having qualified for the award of the I'm professional good. degree of pharmacy. I'm qualified for the award of the profession. Do solemnly swear. that I will use my knowledge and the skills that I have acquired to the best of my ability for the relief of human suffering and the welfare of humanity. That I will abide by the code of ethics, laws and regulations governing the practice of pharmacy and pledge to assist in their enforcement. That I will do my best to develop and maintain professional stature. By keeping abreast of the developments in my own and related disciplines, And whatever I learn on my patient professionally shall remain confidential. So help me God. You may lower your hand. I now proceed to put, uh, to append your signature, take a pen, like the one I've taken. Open it and sign your name sworn on this third day, right? Third day of the month of December in the year of our Lord 2020. Then rise up again. Now, therefore, you are not repeating after me. I'm pronouncing a blessing upon you. Now, therefore, by my ordination as an elder and the servant of the Most High God, do now declare a blessing upon each and every one of you, my sons and daughters, pharmacy graduates, that the Lord bless you, the Lord keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. I will now pray for you. Almighty God, we thank you, we glorify your name for blessing our children to go through successfully the academic pursuit at Kenyatta University. We thank you for those who have also managed to go through successfully the examination at the Pharmacy and Persons Board. Lord, we pray for that one that Lord, you are so mindful about the one who did not make it, that Lord, you will reach out to that one and enable that specific one to also make it and join the ones who are celebrating. Gracious Father, bless each and every one of them, our young colleagues, as they join the career, that dear Lord, they shall be a blessing to the profession and they shall also be blessed 
Lord, may the patients gain immensely from their practice. Bless those who train them, bless their administration, bless their seniors in the profession, and Lord, in general, bless the patients who benefit from the professional expertise of the pharmacist. We ask all this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. God bless you all. That is the end of our whole thing this afternoon. May God bless you. Thank you very much, Honorable Fellow Dr. Roger Zatepe, and hearty congratulations to all our graduates. I will now hand over to Mbao to tell us whether you need to take screenshots and what we need to do for the photographs. And at this point, let everybody put their video on. Even the faculty, former president, President Louis Mashogu as well. Mbao, how do you need us to take these photographs? Or rather the screenshots. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Daniela, our CEO. Uh, with your permission, Honorable Fellow, uh, respected uh, seniors in the profession, I will kindly request all of you to probably, uh, the President, Dr. Louis Mashogu, kindly uh, put on your video. Uh, Dr. Gladys, uh, the faculty, I will request you to kindly switch on your videos so that I, I'll take photos one after the other pitch. This will take only two seconds. Hello, can you hear me, Dr. Daniela? Yes, I can hear you. Yes, I'm requesting the faculty, uh, Kenyatta University, the Dean, uh, the president, uh, Dr. Louis Mashogu, the former president, to kindly put on their videos. Yes, this would be a nice uh, fellow, record Dr. Rogers, for the event. You let your videos still be on. And uh, to the latest uh, doctors in the in the in the country, uh, uh, graduating class of 2020, Kenyatta University, kindly uh, uh, put your videos back on so that we can take the photo. Asante. Yeah, Daniel, well, I think for. I your video. Okay, uh, let me put it on. Okay. Uh, Madam Dean. Maybe I, let me remove my mask for the photograph. Wow, well, my video is on. I can see myself, unless there's a uh, problem. Asante, Asante. A honorable fellow, are you able to? Put back your video on. But his picture, his picture looks like it's a video, so it's fine. Okay. It okay. looks like it. The, yeah, so it's fine. Oh, perfect. Well, here's his. He's brought back his photo. Uh, Dr. Dr. Hon Kahiga, Dr. Mashogu. Yes, my video is on. I don't know Daniela. why it's not showing. I can't see it. Dr. Kahiga's video is on. Yeah, I can also see it. Oh, okay. Unless you have forgotten me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm waiting for the All right, president Bowie. and uh, Dr. Louis Mashogu. Yeah, Asante, yeah for me, uh, I have to log in with a different device, which I'm doing now. Okay, okay, Dr. Ali, I'm, I'm, yeah, waiting, so I'm waiting for you. As soon as you have. Oh yeah, there you go. Perfect, well, one second. Okay, one second, I'm just... Waiting for you to load again, Dr. Louis. I'm here and my video is on. Okay, let me, let me, let me get you. You're not on the first page. I want to get you on the first page. Perfect. One minute.
Perfect, ladies and Asante, uh, Dr. Daniela, back to you. I'm able to, I've been able to get the photo. Okay, thank you, Mbao. Thank you, everybody. Have a good afternoon. Thank you. Bye-bye.